Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Guitars. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to a guitar giveaway. All right, you guys, when we left off, I had put the first coat of finish on this neck. We're gonna wipe one more coat of this hard wax oil this is Pro Coat Uno Coat Natural. Before we wipe this next coat of finish on this neck, I think we're going to slap these threaded metal inserts in the back of this heel. I want to add a little glue down in these holes, not only to hold these threaded metal inserts in here as like a thread locker, but I also think the glue will help lubricate this and make these inserts go in here a little easier. We'll put some on the outside of the, the insert itself. I don't want too much. Again, I want wood to wood contact. I don't want the metal digging into the bottom of my neck pocket. That is perfect. I really like that I chant for the edge of those holes. That gives me some assurance that I do get that wood to wood contact. There we go, our threaded metal inserts are in there. Once that glue dries, those will be permanent, basically. This is a non-abrasive Scotch-Brite. It does not remove material, but it will smooth out a surface and make sure everything's nice and smooth. So when we start to wipe on this next coat, we'll be in good shape. So let's make sure we shake this up really good. And let's just wipe another coat on here. So I want to wipe it down one more time with a nice saturating coat of this stuff, but I don't want to leave it puddled. I just want to make sure I've got nice even coverage. All right, you guys, I'm going to let this sit for about five or ten minutes. So I'm using a yellow microfiber cloth for this. I need to get frets put in this neck, but I also want to get a couple more coats of that hard wax Ur oil wiped on this neck before we do that. And I want to get my headstock logos lasered in here. So this being the Kuiper Alpha, and I've told you guys already, that indicates it's a one pickup guitar. That body shape will be known as the Kuiper from now on. The scratch build that I'm planning on doing for the great guitar build off this year. That guitar is going to be called the Ceres Theta. Theta identifies that guitar as a tremolo guitar. So that's my plan. You guys let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button while you're down there. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow the channel in the quest to grow this. I'm going to continue to do giveaways. I'm going to continue to post tutorial videos. I've got big plans coming up. Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Tonight's Tuesday, May the 16th. We're going to put some frets in this neck. So this fret wire is 2.7 millimeters wide, 1.9 millimeters tall. It's the same exact size as the medium jumbo, or what I consider medium jumbo, that I get from Centoms, but this is... Uh, Jeskar nickel silver fret wire. So I want to take this triangle file very gently, just a couple of passes, and chamfer the edge of that slot. I just want this glue in there to fill the void below the fret thing. It's raining. So there we go, 22 frets installed. Nice wing fret fretboard. All right, everybody, we're back in the shop. Tonight's Friday, May the 19th. So I've got a line drawn right there. I've got my nut slot cut right before it meets the maple. 
So what I've decided to do is after I drew that little line that I just showed you guys, I scratched that line with my scalpel. This is going to follow that scalpel line. We should just be able to flake this out. I don't want to do the whole thing at once though. I want to go very gently and let's just flatten out this this bottom part of the shelf here. I've got a piece of 180 sandpaper here and I got a piece of 400 here. So this 180 allows me to remove a little material and then the 400 polishes it back up. That's a two millimeter lead. Knowing that it's sharpened in the center of that lead tells me that this center point is right at a millimeter above our fret line. So I can drag this across that nut with it sitting on the shelf like this, just like so. And I can look at that line that I've drawn and I don't need to go any further. If you can see my slots are almost touching that line. We'll get our crimson fret leveling file, which is right here. And I want to just square these edges off. I want to get the logo burning our headstock up here. All right, there we go. I'm actually okay with that. So we're done with the laser. Oh, wait, one more thing. I promised Geo <laughs> I would engrave a flash logo somewhere on this guitar. So we're gonna put that on the back of the neck heel. There you go, brother. Flash. I'll sand that clean so that looks nice and tight. I want to get these cavities shielded, the back side of my cavity cover shielded. So you guys all know I use Easy Slide graphite based coating. We're going to get a nice even coat this first go around. I'll always put two coats on it. You want to keep this nice and smooth and not leave any puddles on the surface or anything. Um, we'll come back and give this another coat in an hour or so once we get some of this fret work knocked out. I need a notched straight edge. This is a crimson. It's a 25 and a half inch scale and a 24 and three quarter inch scale on the other side. You can also use this for a 25 inch scale. The notches are wide enough to be able to do that. A crimson fret leveling beam. I've got 320 on one side, 400 on the other. I've got that marked. I've got a Baroque three-sided rounded diamond fret crowning file. I only use this to get the crown rounded. I like using a triangle file for that and I've got two that have become my favorites. This is a crimson standard triangle safe edged fret crowning file here and then I've got one of the new Velorb smooth cut premium fret crowning files from Crimson as well. I have become a huge fan of this fret guru fret end dressing file. It's nice and thick. It's got two safe edges. It's got a rounded point on it down there. Um, I just really like this file. I've got an anodized aluminum, also epoxy finished, crimson fret rocker here. 36 millimeter Q1 masking tape. This is thin masking tape with a really nice adhesive on it. This is auto body masking tape. And then I've got some 19 millimeter masking tape made the same way. We're perfectly flat on our fretboard. 
we're ready to tape up and start to level these frets. I've got my fretboard taped up nice. Um, everything's burnished down. Actually, the whole neck's taped up because I don't want to take a chance on getting my dirty fingers on that maple. We're ready to roll. We're going to draw up our fret tops. All right. I want to look down through here and make sure every single fret has a flat all the way across the top. And we've got that. Before we go any further, I want to cut my final bevel into the edge of these frets. Now, we're going to take our leveling beam. We'll hit it with the 321st. There's our 320. Let's turn it over and get our 400. And if we want to increase the bevel slightly, we can do that with this 400 grit. All right. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. We'll start with the 320. You can tell if you're at the right angle or not by what kind of surface you're seeing on the end of your fret. We're going to take our fret rocker and go down through here and make sure we're happy. All right, we're good. So now I know my frets are all level. So we can start the crowning process at this point. I've got my frets drawn back up with the black marker. I've already done one just to get a feel for it. So I want to show you guys my method for crowning a fret. Everything's level. We've got our initial bevel put on our fret ends. Now we're going to put the crown back on these frets. Now that I know they're all level, I've checked them with the fret rocker. So I use this three-sided Baroque diamond file. I got this thing on Amazon. It was 30 bucks, $29.99. And that's going to establish the round shape on the top of this fret. I want to make certain that I'm going straight across. I've got these drawn up so I can see the line that's being left. I want to make sure that line stays in the center of the fret. That's all I do with this thing. Then I draw the fret back up. And sometimes if I've got massive fret work to do, I'll start with the, the standard crimson fret crowning file. But in this case, and knowing these are nickel silver frets and not stainless or anything, um, I will start with the Velorb um, crowning file from Crimson. This is the smooth cut. So what I'm going to do is lay this file over. And I want to file this until I get about a half millimeter line in the center of my fret. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and dress the end on that fret we just crowned. The only pyramid shape I want created on my frets is from the leveling beam. I want to immediately, after I get these frets level, I want to start creating the round top back on the fret as quick as possible without removing too much material. That's what this round file does for me, you guys. So that's my thinking on it. All right, we're going to the next one. And I'm just gonna work my way down through here, you guys. There we go. So what I've done 
is I continued on with the sandpaper just like I was doing. Um, I ended up putting a little scotch bright wheel in my Dremel and I very lightly on low speed went down and run that scotch bright over each fret one pass forward one pass back that's where we are now so after the second tape up all I've done was um, run the sandpaper back and forth across here wrapped around my finger to establish that round top that we want and then I dress the ends a little better and then I put the fine scotch bright wheel in the Dremel on low speed, one pass forward, one pass back, very lightly, and just dulled these frets down. So that's all we've done. What we're gonna do now is take some of this polish. This is Glenol or Glanol. This is from Germany. And I've got a firm felt wheel on the Dremel right now. This is a one inch wheel. Then we'll go over it with the soft felt wheel. And I won't use the Glanol the second pass. I'm going to use Ferrecla finish compound for that. So let's get this done. We'll start on the 22nd fret. We'll go to the soft. This is also a little wider. This is Ferrecla G360 super fast finish. We got some highly polished, I mean mirror finish frets. Our fret ends look nice and you know everything's just great. Three weeks from tomorrow which will be June the 17th, that'll be on a Saturday, we're going to give the Kuiper Alpha away. That's three weeks from now. So you guys keep your eye on the channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date and you'll know when I release that video. I'm really anxious to see what this thing's going to look like with black hardware. I think black hardware is going to be so killer on this thing. So let's mark our screw locations. I used the ruler across the back of here to get these in line. I'm going to punch these in so the drill has a point to find. I got a two millimeter drill bit here. These screws are two and a half millimeters in diameter. See how easy these are to go in here. I may not need to wax them. No, I'm not. Awesome. There we go, you guys. Tuners installed. Straight line on the back, or better yet, there. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May the 28th. We're about to get started on the final assembly for the Kuiper Alpha. I decided that I am going to use a pickup ring. Um, I just think it'll look more elegant, a little bit more finished. And it's black, so it goes with the rest of the hardware. No big deal. I got the bridge plate mounted here. I got the potentiometers in, and I got the ground wire ran up to the bridge. And we're nice and, you know, we're good on that. I also got the string through ferrules installed. So that went really good. This one is a really good one to leave the shop to give to one of you guys because it's the most unique guitar I've ever built. And I've really impressed myself with how the colors turned out. Um, this copper leafing turned out really good. It's not perfect, but it's me. 
I love this. I love building it tires. You guys know that already. And I'm just really proud of this, you know. So let's go and mark these holes a little better. All right, those look nice and even. I want to be so careful with this, you guys. All right. There's our pickup mounted. Let's pop these saddles back in the bridge. Just a little added protection. We'll set the intonation after the guitar hangs a couple of weeks. I'll wait until then. I'm going to run all these little grub screws until they're flush with the face of the saddle. It looks really nice with black hardware on it, I think. So again, I'm using a Kent Armstrong Vintage Series pickup, which will be ultimately like a PAF. It's an Elnico 5. And I haven't measured the resistance, but it seems like I remember reading on the WD website that it was like 8.5K, I think it was. All right, you guys, I went ahead and finished the wiring off camera. Um, I, I've got a problem talking and soldering at the same time, so we're wired up. I'm not going to sort the back cavity cover out quite yet. We're going to mount the neck and make sure everything's working like it should. We'll take care of that, you know, in a little while, whatever. I've got the back cavity cover right here, so it's ready to roll. I am so excited right now. I had to walk away from it for a minute to calm down. I love this part of a build. We're going to put this neck in. I'll let you guys watch this. You know, you've been waiting on it long enough. You need to see it come together too. So I'm just going to... Nice tight neck pocket. I like that. Nice. I'm putting regular Ernie Ball slinkies on here, 10 through 46. Get our neck rest. Again, these tuners are locking. Yeah, we got some nut work to do, but not much. All right, you guys, after months of work, problems, solutions, thought, <laughs> you guys know what I went through to build this thing. Here she is, the Kuiper Alpha. I love this thing. It is going to be so hard for me to send this away from here, but I'm going to do it because I promised I would. One of you guys is going to win this guitar. I hadn't got the cavity cover sorted out yet, but it's coming. Everything's ready to roll. It's holding tune. I'm getting signal from the pickup. I checked all that stuff. All right, you guys. So I had said two weeks. I'm going to let this thing hang up at the house and get acclimated to a standard environment. I just think that'll give me plenty of time to sort any issues out. June the 17th. I will announce who has won this guitar. I'll do a play demo for you guys. We'll go over in detail what the specs are. You guys have watched me build it here on YouTube. I love this thing. I hope whoever wins this guitar plays it all the time, and I hope they keep it for the rest of their lives. It's nice and simple and elegant, yet flashy. Geo calls this guitar flash, and I did engrave the uh, 
the Flash logo on the back of the neck heel. I'm super happy with this thing. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. One more video, and you guys are going to find out who won this thing. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Please don't forget to hit the notification bell so you guys can stay up to date as to what I got coming down the pipe here. I'm about to start a scratch build for the great guitar build off as well as a community build, which I'm doing a collaboration with Gio from Tornella Guitars for that. You'll be seeing a slew of videos from me over the coming months, and I can't wait to get started on that. Join me back here for the next video, you guys. And until then, as always, peace and love.